Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Thanks for doing this briefing. Um, I, I saw you, you would, I'm not sure if it was the direct quote with you, but you were being quoted about the difficulty of counting the number of civilians killed because of the number of, of jurisdictions or groups even issuing death certificates. So I wanted to, I guess I wanted to know a little bit more. I think the number was 18 different authorities issuing documentation of death, including the Syrian government. Are, does these include, you know, armed groups? Or are there areas of the country where there's no way, possibility to get a certificate? Um, and I'd also wanted to ask you about, in Afrin, there are these various reports of, of uh, and this would Im definitely impact civilians, looting of, uh, of, of uh, people's property and residences, including by government-backed uh, militias. Can you, what's been done on that? Is it still going on? And who is responsible? Thanks. Uh, thanks. On your, uh, Matthew, on your first question, um, when we asked Syrians well, from a protection point of view, you know, what are the practical challenges they face? Um, systematically, in both uh, various locations, whether it's the north or the south or the east, uh, people talk about the challenge of documentation or the lack of documentation. Uh, if an identity card is really very important to pass through a checkpoint. Is the one item that everybody keeps on them. If they have to run their home in one minute, that's the one thing they take with them. And at the moment in Syria, there's been there are multiple authorities, including non-state actors. Uh, local muhtars, local councils uh, that issue documents. Uh, interesting enough, in all locations in Syria, if you ask, when we ask people which document would you rather want to have, they all say the government of Syria proper one. They see that as kind of the genuine one that needs to be given. So birth certificates, death certificates, uh, marriage certificates, uh, identity cards are very important. And at the moment, it's a total mess because there is multiple authorities, local councils, groups uh, that issue these documents. And of course, people w they would rather have any paper than no paper because many have lost actually the original documents or there's new births and so on. Uh, of course, at the same time, they're worried that if the only paper I have I present it and that becomes a protection issue with me because it's been issued by authority regardless of whether I agree or disagree with it, that becomes an issue. So this is the question of identification, not just in deaths, but also in births and marriages. In, in civil change uh, status, uh, it's, it's, it's a messy situation that really uh, needs some addressing. And we are looking at it, actually, to see, as United Nations, what and if we can do uh, at least to take one of the worries off people's uh, minds in terms of, uh, and that's a, that's a, a typical protection issue that uh, we try to move on the ground. Uh, in Afrin, and uh, I was in Ankara a few weeks back, um, there were some reports that came out on looting. I raised it with the government of Turkey authorities, and I received a very quick answer uh, from the Minister of Foreign Affairs on this is an issue that is unacceptable. We are pursuing it. We do not accept any, any looting and in some incidents that have taken place. We have addressed them both in terms of also of punitive measures for the people who are behind it. Uh, empty properties, safety is a, 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 an issue that the Turkish armed forces have taken on board. So this is really um, one of the issues that I raised when I was in Ankara um, a little bit more than two weeks ago. And uh, also we asked to be able to, of course, bring humanitarian assistance. And I was uh, uh, pleased that we had cross-border operation with UN agencies that took assistance from uh, Gaziantep uh, into uh, Afrin town and a number of other villages and including a needs assessment that was done there. What's important with Afrin is you have 137,000 people who have fled south to Tal Refat and other locations. These are within the government of Syria. Uh, some people have managed to come back. Some people have talked about bribing uh, money to checkpoints and so on to be able to come back. Some have talked about the Kurdish officials not allowing them to leave. So again, the freedom of movement is important. Many families, individuals are worried about their apartments, properties, um, in particular after the reports on looting and other acts that uh, are, have reportedly taken place. Uh, and this is where I think the cross-line, cross-border uh, delivery that we had is not just the assistance, it's protection by presence, which is really very important. Can I just ask one, is there, is, is there precedent for the UN being a you know, provider of identity documents? I mean, I'm th I think in Kosovo they did do it. And I know another, I mean, have you looked into this? In the, is what you're talking about giving people a kind of a UN 
identity document? At the moment, it's trying to find a solution. So uh, trying to see what is it that will, will make it really a solution. I mean, providing, um, uh, trying to come up with a solution that will work for the people. So mm -hmm. it's not necessarily uh, a UN document, but uh, um, uh, taking, finding a way forward for mm -hmm. the challenge that the people are facing on the ground. So I don't have any more specific to announce because this is something in the making that we work as we speak.